Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to What's the Word. My name is Paula and as always I enjoy spending time with you guys. I'm so excited. For our YouTube friends, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on with my face. It's all red. Me and my little Noah are like breaking out really bad. I don't know what's going on. Oh, and my camera and his poor foot. Oh, poor thing. But anyways, let's not talk about our skin. I'm very, very excited to spend time with you because we are working on A World Gone Wrong. Noah's Ark, starting with Noah's Ark. Uh, obviously, I love Noah because that's my son's name. But uh, yeah, I'm very excited to be here with you today. And I told you guys last time about having to... Um, that I used, I, I, you know, I used to have these things on my, on my wall about, uh, Bible verses everywhere. Well, for some reason, I just, I'm, I'm having to know this Bible inside and out. I want to know every word. I want to know why it was written, who it was written by, what timelines, everything. I want to know everything. So that is what I've been working on is building my arc of putting it all over my house and oh it's so exciting i'm so excited and i'm excited to spend time with you guys i'm at my son's school bright and early it's uh two o'clock he doesn't get out for another hour so we're gonna sit here for a little bit and read our bible and just enjoy this beautiful weather it was snowing just the other day and today it is 70 something Western New York weather, right? So we're on Genesis chapter 6, a world gone wrong. Oh my goodness. Then the people began to multiply on the earth, and daughters were born of them. The sons of God saw the beautiful women, or daughters of men, and where did it go? took any they wanted as their wives. Listen, guys. Oh my goodness, that's not what God intended. Okay, and I'm listen. I'm I'm like I said, I'm learning. So I just did the Song of Songs and why it was written, and I can't wait to get there. But why do you think um, Adam and Eve, right, when they ate the apple, they were ashamed? Remember, they were ashamed because they were naked and they didn't, you know, oh my God, listen. Oh, I don't know how to get this out. I hope I can get this out. <laughs> oh, I was thinking this in the tub and it just like blew my mind because I've said this before, but you got to listen to me. Adam and Eve were babies. They were innocent. They didn't know that being naked is a bad thing, right? They didn't know that men were supposed to have, you know, the whole baby making process. They didn't know about that, right? They didn't know that until she ate the apple. Why do you think it's pain? Listen, I, oh, <laughs> it's pain not only in childbirth, but me as a mom, I don't know about you, and even, uh, you know, whatever happened to me, happen but with the two that I have raising children you know raising children is a big pain it's a pain it's a pain and especially you know trying to trying to keep them away from the worldly things and teach them what is right while trying to hold on you know to them and their innocence and then they hit puberty like my 13 year old you, you hit the puberty and then it's just like you lose control, but then they get older and they get born again and they become clean, right? This is, ah, uh, then they become innocent again and they become, you know, nakedness is, is an innocent thing and special. And I don't know, to me, that's what it is. That's the whole thing with, with life and everything. We're supposed to teach our children and we're supposed to to praise Jesus and show our children and you know while they're teenagers they're not gonna want to listen or talk to you or nothing and uh, for me anyways this is me <laughs> my my 13 year old ain't gonna want to do it and I'm pretty sure when Noah gets you know a little bit older he's not gonna care too much but that's our thing and then they will come back to God as long as we show them the right way 
And we ourselves as adults, we ourselves have to be born again. You have to throw all the earthly stuff away. And listen, right here. The Lord said that my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time. How do you define spirit? What is the word spirit to you? To me, it's what connects us all together. It's spirit is the energy that never changes. Spirit, I mean, (laughs) it ever changes. It never dies. Spirit is the energy, right? People are energies. We're an energy. That's what a spirit is. And God is that spirit that connects us. And as he says right here, he took, they took any as they wanted. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time. For they are only mortal flesh. It says it right here. Spirit, flesh, body, mind, soul. I've said this before. What does it mean to you? In the future... Their normal lifespan will be no more than 120. Remember, everybody's, uh, except for Enoch, was over 900. And I think there was one just under under uh, under 900, but it was close to, you know, over 800. Oh, my goodness, I'm stuttering. I'm sorry. Um, But there was over... Almost 900, sorry. (laughs) But it says right here, they will not be more than 120 years old. I told you before, my mom passed at 60. And, you know, I don't know anybody that lives 120. We, like I said, I know, you know, we hear about it in the news and stuff. But I personally don't know anybody that lives even close to that. Isn't that crazy? So God didn't like what they were doing and taking wives as their own and just having a big nasty party so in those days and for some time after giant nephilites lived on the earth listen that's because they interacted remember gods took their the woman's the found oh my goodness daughters of men and made babies and now there's giants on the earth for whenever the son of god the sons of god had intercourse with women they gave birth to children who became heroes and famous warriors of ancient times that's crazy that's awesome though it's good and bad um then the lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth And he saw that everything they thought and imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry that he ever made them and put them on the earth. So all these giants were having intercourse and making, became all the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. But he flooded the earth and killed everything. So how... How did that happen? Everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on the earth. It broke his heart. And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing. All the people, the large animals, the small animals that scurry along the ground, and even the birds of the sky. I am sorry I ever made them. But Noah, Noah found favor with the Lord. Now we're on the story of Noah. But how? Just that one question right here. These days and for some time after, giant Nephilites lived on the earth. For whenever the Son of God had intercourse with women, they gave birth to children and became the heroes and famous warriors of ancient times. So that must have been the time before Noah, right? It had to have been, and then it was just some time after. Then the Lord said he didn't want the nastiness on the earth. Now we're on the story of Noah. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living 
on earth at the time. His wife wasn't blameless. His children weren't blameless. Right? Noah was the only blameless person living on the earth at that time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. Isn't that bad? That's oh, so sad. I feel like that's what we're going through right now. And it's going to say that history repeats itself over and over and over. And it's just really sad. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures, for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. He'll wipe us out, every living creature on the earth for being bad. Sorry, I needed a drink. (laughs) Build a large boat, traditionally rendered an ark from cypress wood or gopher wood, and waterproof it with tar, inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat, listen man, this is ginormous. Make the boat... 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. In Hebrews, that would be 300 cubits or 138 meters long, 50 cubits or 23 meters wide, and 30 cubits, um, 13.8 meters high. Leave an 18-inch opening. Hebrew, an opening of one cubit or 46 centimeters. Below the roof, all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks. Inside the boat, lower, middle, and upper. Look! I am about to cover the earth with a flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on the earth will die. But I will confirm my covenant with you, Noah. I will confirm my covenant with you. So you entered the boat. You and your wife and your sons and their wives. Even though Noah's family was corrupt because he was a blameful Right? Because they said Noah was the only blameless person. So God still wanted Noah with him and his wife and his sons and their wives to start all over again. Right? Listen to this part, guys. Oh my goodness. Bring a pair, a pair of every kind of animal, a male and a female, every kind of animal, a male and a female, into the boat with you to keep them alive during the flood. Pairs of every kind of bird and every kind of animal and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. So God picked chosen animals to be able to march to Noah. How's that? Like, how is that? I told you about that before. Like, how do animals know? Like, how did they know that they were the chosen ones to go to Noah to be able to reproduce these animals all over again? Right? Be sure to take on board... Oh, I said it wrong. Pairs of every kind of animal, bird, and then we'll come to you. I did say it right. And be sure to take on board enough food for your family and for all the animals. Noah did everything 
exactly as God had commanded him. And I think that might be a hard part for us. And what I'm learning as well is, you know, it's hard for us to listen to God's commandments. I told you guys about my Lyle friend, um, the Metro PCS guy. I didn't listen to God's command for like a long time. And that was the loudest I've ever heard him. When I used to cry, literally drive and cry to him that I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't want to be in the situation that I was in. I begged him to help me and he told me to go talk to a stranger. And it turned out to be the best thing in my life. I'm telling you guys, I know it doesn't make sense right now, but it will come to life as as things happen. Do exactly as God commands you. I hope to see you back here for chapter 7. I'm so excited to be with you guys. I love you. Have a great day and uh, we'll see you soon.